mean, just look at this guy. Look at this professional fuckboy. So this professional fuckboy is the one that you're going to elect as your county commissioner, one of the three county kings, one of the three most powerful people in the county is going to go to Zachariah Lundergan, uh, uh, Swearingen the third Grimes. Is that, is that what you're telling me? I actually do think he's got a few good ideas. So, Mr. Hey, brah, brah, let's just be like California, brah. He's got a couple good ideas. He's talking about public works projects. He's talking about a downtown initiative. He wants to advertise the downtown. So he's saying, let's, you know, bring people, come in, Mr. Infinite Chills and Thrills, Mr. Roller Coaster Rides and Haunted Museums, indoor go-karts. Why not outdoor go-karts, but indoor go-karts, water rides. So when he talks about infrastructure, he's talking about haunted museums. So we're going to get a whole bunch of haunted museums. We must think of Pueblo as the big city when it comes to outlying communities and draw them in. So he's right about that. And uh, public works projects, haunted museums, is that haunted museums? Why not just regular museums? Why do they got to be haunted? Is that going to add to the and water rides and thrills and you know, a bunch of roller coasters. Those are cool things, so I like that he's thinking of these things. But what about gymnasiums or basketball courts, solar trees? I mean, those are cool, fun, recreational things, too. Just parks, really. Parks, I mean, a lot of traditional things, too. So parks and, um, let's see, gymnasiums, basketball. What was that? I was thinking of something else. What about health care? What about education? Does he care about any of that shit? So being a Republican, I would think not. But he is right about getting some public works projects into Pueblo City, downtown initiative, try to get more people into the downtown. So, yeah, the, the idea of public works projects, I agree with. In favor of the Second Amendment, so I think it makes me a bad progressive liberal. <laughs> I agree with the Second Amendment because I agree with rights and freedoms. And until you give me the 50 rights and freedoms that are my natural inherent rights codified into the document, I'm not prepared to get rid of any of my rights and freedoms. They're liberally construed for, you know, uh, intentionally. So he's going to be pro Second Amendment, I believe. He's got a gun range, so he's, you know, got, uh, he's shooting guns all over the place. So I would assume he's in favor of the Second Amendment. He's talking about Pueblo first. That's fine. Keep Pueblo progressive. I think it's fan-fucking-tastic, right? Like America first, Pueblo first. So that's okay. We should think of ourselves first. He also mentioned affordable housing. So that's good. He also mentioned livable wage. So he's saying the right words. He said affordable housing, livable wage. And that's to entice people to come into here. So we need affordable housing. Let me repeat that. Affordable. You have all these, you know, heroin addicts and the homeless. They're coming from Pueblo. Pueblo is creating the homeless people and the homeless problem and the heroin addicts. They are from Pueblo, born and raised in Pueblo, and they are educated in Pueblo. And that's where they should stay. That is your own children. Take care of your own family. Take care of your own kids. What the fuck are you doing? They're coming from your own schools, your own neighborhoods, your own homes. At least 30% of the homeless and heroin addicts are locally grown. So when he talks about creating jobs, I agree with job creation. I agree with affordable housing, I believe and a livable wage, too. In fact, that job creation, I would love to expand. Uh, you need to get a shit ton of jobs. If you don't have a job, you die in this culture. So great, gr green, great, smart, well-paid jobs. Um, small businesses, too. You could create small businesses and create jobs. They so somehow give a hand up, not a hand out. Yeah, I guess a good job would be I believe that every Pueblona a king, a queen, every Pueblona is a god. And we should all get ourselves a storefront on Main Street, and we could sell whatever we want to sell, Fifty, you know, a $5,000 grant to, to start whatever business we want to start. The, he talks about a livable wage. He talks about affordable housing. There is no affordable housing in Pueblo County, so that's vital. So hopefully he actually listens to himself on affordable housing and job creation. It should be the, jo uh, the government's job to create jobs because – Without a job, you die in America. So that's a capitalist society. Without jobs, we're the you know we should be able to start small businesses. But if you don't have the five thousand dollars startup capital, how the hell are you going to get a start a business? So uh, another problem that I see actually as I'm reading this is that he doesn't have a heartbeat. You have Republicans who think with their brains, and so you know they're better with their pocketbooks, and Democrats think with their hearts. So they care about people. Republicans don't care about people. Democrats spend too much money, but Republican lives.
give corporate welfare to, you know, minor league baseball developers. He's ready to give them, you know, all the welfare, millions of dollars worth of welfare for a minor league baseball stadium and minor league baseball team, minor, minor, minor league, like the tiniest minors. You never, the Owls, the St. Louis Owls or whoever that was, that's what, that's, we were all going to get rich off of that. So Republican laissez-faire, big corporate capitalism is what has been put upon the local work and poor and homeless classes forever. That's that's what we need, just more laissez-faire, big corporate capitalism, Republican bullshit. And we don't need more of that. We need, uh, you know, uh, both. We need both the brain and our hearts. We need to think with our brains, but we need to give a shit, too. And so I'm not hearing that he gives a shit when he's like, you know, giving a hand out, not a hand up. I, I kind of hate that phrase. I sort of detest that phrase. We need to give people food, water, clothing, shelter, the basic necessities of life. We've America shouldn't be afraid of Bernie Sanders' socialism because it's been here the whole time. Dwight Eisenhower is one of the biggest fucking socialists in uh, modern-day American history. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Republican, a big Christian Republican who had a 90% tax rate for these big corporations because uh, either they were going to get taxed on all their profits or it would force them to hire more people, more labor, more jobs, or to reinvest in their own capital. So reinvest in the corporation, in the business, make your business better, or hire new people. That's why Dwight D. Eisenhower believed in the 90% tax rate on corporations, major big corporations. So I just don't hear the heartbeat. Where's the heartbeat at? Yeah, he's going to say, give a hand up, not a hand out. You're going to give a shit? I mean, uh, at the very least, get them out of the rain. Can you give them a shelter? Or are they going to give, nope, not even a homeless shelter, huh? Nope, not even going to give anybody a homeless shelter. So let alone a sandwich or how about a drink of water? Is Zach Swearingen going to give it a little bit of compassion? So this is actually the good things that I agree with. <laughs> Zachary Swearingen, I think that these are issues and words and ideas that uh, the Wiseman campaign should pick up too. Affordable housing, livable wage, and um, something else. But uh, there is some compassion here. The, the compassion was implementing this program, Michigan State Police Angel Program, uh, police assisted addiction and recovery initiative where people were allowed to come in uh, addicts heroin addicts were voluntarily allowed to seek help and they would not get arrested and he also wanted to create a voucher based initiative creating feeling of self motivation well anyways the he's trying to get the homeless people to work but he did mention that for the addicts to give them you know a uh, free pass to give them sanctuary to give them get out of jail free card to give them a, you know, you're not going to get arrested. So uh, that's a little bit of compassion, a little bit of love and compassion, a little bit of bleeding heart liberalism when it comes to the drug war. He seems to think that you shouldn't get arrested. Maybe perhaps it's a public health thing and we should address it as such, which is what we should do. We should do Switzerland, uh, reduce the harm model. And uh, we should have some compassion, but he doesn't have compassion for economics. He believes in a worker die philosophy. Worker die, motherfuckers, right? Uh, bed and a hot meal for only those who get uh, does work in the community. So do uh, some slave labor, do some bullshit slave labor, go around the secretary's house and mow her damn lawn, and then they'll get you a bed and a hot meal. Some things should just be given to you, a bed and a hot meal. And what if you're a veteran? Help the veterans unless they're poor and homeless. Then they don't get a bed or a hot meal unless they work for you for Miss, you know, Becky, the secretary, for eight hours uh, mowing her lawn and doing her landscaping job. That a thousand years of darkness will descend upon a Pueblo County if Zach is elected. So a thousand years of darkness, just like Chuck Norris said, would happen if Barack Obama was elected for the second time. So the things I agree with him, he believes in some public works, but haunted museums. He believes in job creation. Job creation, there's words that the Wiseman campaign should listen to. Job creation, livable wage, and affordable housing. So I'm glad he's saying these words. He said them in uh, you know, paragraphs that had nothing to do with these issues at all, but these are words and phrases that you could expand into actual departments. So everybody needs a job in order to live or they need to have their own business, right? They've got to have their own economic lifeline. So either you own your own business or you're working for somebody else who owns their own business. So either provide more jobs or provide more ways to start your own businesses. Those are the two ways to do it. So I agree with job creation. Oh, I still think he's, you know, a professional fuckboy. And there's nothing, actually, that's a compliment. <laughs> um, but the 
uh, he's uh, the issues that he's putting forth is just he's pro corporate welfare, right? He believes in corporate welfare. He doesn't care about the poor or working classes. He is a planning and zoning land Nazi. So we have freedom up until Zach tells us we don't have freedom. What can I do with my land? Can I put a, a pole, an American flag up here? He could tell me, no, you got to pay two hundred dollar, you know, uh, permit for that. He seriously suggested relocating Fort Carson to Pueblo County. So it's good to love the troops and to love America, but why not develop your own fort? Why are we going to pick up another fort that in you know another part of the state, like in a helicopter? Do we does he want us to dig like up underneath and then and not in the city, right? It's out in the counties so in the east side, north side. Where, where does he suggest putting Fort Carson at? Carson is uh, a U.S. military fort in Colorado Springs. It's in Colorado Springs, so it's an hour or two away from here. It's pretty close to Pueblo, but to relocate the entire fort down, we could expand it, maybe if you expand it big enough, or maybe you could have a Pueblo side. But why Fort Carson? Let's just have Fort, you know, Abraham Lincoln. Let's get a Fort Abraham Lincoln in Pueblo. Why do we need to move the entire – it's just a crazy idea. It's an insane idea. So it's just um, – I don't know. I don't even know what to think about it. So the more staff, he wants to serve more warrants. He doesn't think that the uh, police are serving enough warrants. So he wants to increase the amount of warrants that are being issued and served. So he wants to throw everybody in jail. And he won't be the necessary three branch of government check that the executive branches are required to be. He doesn't even know that he's going to be the executive branch and the legislative branch because the commission, those two branches are combined are about values and principles. When it comes to values and principles, he doesn't give a shit about the homeless. Instead, he's going to blame the homeless for what? All the crime and the rape, just like uh, Trump did with the Mexicans, right? I'm sure some of the homeless are good people. No, they're all human beings. Treat them like humans and they will act humanly if you don't think that they're acting humanly. And the heroin crisis, the poppy fields in Afghanistan does more for the heroin crisis in a published city than what the homeless do. So the homeless are the clients, they're the customers. Go after the big wigs. Who are the big, uh, rich, wealthy, powerful people getting heroin into Pueblo City? That's who you need to pin the heroin on if you want the war on drugs to even matter. Planning and zoning land Nazi, he's not for my freedom to do uh, what I want with my own land. I buy land, I can't do whatever I want with it because of Zach in Pueblo County, his planning and zoning commission. He thinks Fort Carson should just Swearingen is kind of like a Donald Trump. He's a Trumpist, a Trumpism, fascism. Uh, that's what uh, Trumpism is. It's a, the rise of American fascism. So he's coming in, right, with a Republican hat on, not running away from Trump, not saying issue, not distancing. The Walker Stapleton is embracing Trump, and he's making immigration and universal health care. So that's the overall context of the state races. So Zach Swearingen is kind of like Donald Trump. But he's actually beneath the Donald, so he's more like a Billy Bush. Zach Swearingen is public county's Billy Bush, and he's not a progressive. He, does, he wants to serve more warrants. We need more staff to serve more warrants. And he also doesn't understand the three branches of government. He has to check the police. If he's not checking the police, nobody is. So he needs to understand that he's the executive branch. So he's not for any kind of housing for the homeless. All the five things that Chris Wiseman has said, he's got a comprehensive. Chris Wiseman does. Swearingen isn't going to try to fight to raise wages. He's not going to fight for unions. He's going to fight against the unions. He's for the corporations. The corporations are the people. The baseball developers are the people. Not the people themselves, the working class and the poor and the homeless people. The people themselves aren't the people. The corporations, the minor league baseball developers are the people. So housing, this is what Chris Wiseman wants for the homeless. His comprehensive homelessness plan is medical services, mental health services, addiction counseling services that lead to employment and housing. So all five of those things will not happen with a Swearingen administration. Zach Swearingen will let the people of Public County who declare bankruptcy or get evicted go bankrupt and go homeless. Zach Swearingen doesn't have a war on poverty. He's got a war on unions. He's got a Richard Nixon war on drugs. So there's war on the streets, war in the Middle East, no war on poverty, no war on homelessness. No war on the capitalist class, the owner class that feeds their machine with the blood, sweat, toil, and tears of our... He's going to, you know, basically fuck up everything. A thousand years of darkness will descend upon Pueblo County if Zach Swearingen is elected county commissioner. This professional fuckboy is going to professionally fuck Pueblo County up beyond all redemption. Complete foobar. So he says his first priority as county commissioner will be to listen to the community. He didn't listen to me. He didn't care about my concerns. 
I'm sick of all the fucking crime in publicity. Is he, gonna, he said he's going to lower crime. You would think, and what about all the woman beaters? You got a lot of men who wants to beat the shit out of women there. What about the child beaters? God, lots of child abuse going on. Women abuse, child abuse, just for the fuck of it, right? That's what the people of publicity want to do. So he doesn't think my concerns matter. So what? He's for violence against women and children. He's for all the crime in Pueblo City. So he's just bullshitting me. He's just saying that he wants to decrease crime, but he doesn't actually want to decrease crime. He's got initiatives to get the citizenry more involved, give him back that feeling that their voice sitting there gets away from himself. He believes that great leadership must not make decisions from an ivory tower, but rather from the ground surrounded by the people. Ivory tower, that's like the uh, education system, universities and whatnot, and on the ground surrounded by people. That's exactly where the general, the general is better on the ground with their soldiers, fighting with their soldiers instead of in the war room or in the White House or in the ivory tower, like he is saying, is better for the leader to be amongst their people. But we also need a leader. So if you can lead the people, but if the people are sleeping, you may have to just run out in front of everybody like Gary Clark says. So Zach Swearingen, he's, you know, uh, this was about the good ideas. There's a few good ideas, but overall, I just don't think he'll do very good. I don't think he'll be a, a good county commissioner. One interesting thing, and actually I agree with this, but from the, I agree, I disagree. My reasoning is different than why he uh, concludes the same thing that I could. Swearingen is writing in his platform that he's going to be with the people. He cares about the people. He loves the people, he, not their education or their health care. In fact, he does mention education, though. So universal, I would assume he's against our life, right? Universal education or universal health care is life. But let's talk about uh, education. So this professional fuckboy, he's saying let's improve education in schools. Well, how's he going to do that? More authority, more bureaucrats in the administration. What does he mean when he's talking about uh, you know, helping out with education? Well, what he's talking about is more charter schools and more vouchers. More choices, right? He wants parent choice. So he wants uh, more charter schools, so less public school monies to go for private schools. He wants vouchers so parents can choose this school, that school, or another school. I agree with this. I agree from the left. I just think that there's too much right-wing fascism in our American education system, so a choice would be a good thing. But there's a lot of people on the left. There's a bunch of teachers and administration and politicians who will kiss the teacher's ass no matter what. So a lot of people in D60 will lose a lot. Public County's Billy Bush, that's what Public County's Billy Bush is going to get us, more charter schools and more vouchers. Now, again, like I said, uh, I actually agree with that conclusion, but there's going to be a lot of people in education that, you know, uh, are not going to like that. So he's talking about getting charter schools. He's talking about getting vouchers to Public County. Now, unfortunately for Zach Swearingen, he has no power to do anything when it comes to education. He's only got influence, and that's it. Just his voice, just whatever charisma, whatever he can muster, you know, together. He can work with, you know, the educators, school boards, parents, students, whoever he wants to, to you know, make uh, schools better. But when he talks about school choice, don't, you know, don't get it mixed up. He's talking about charter schools and he's talking about vouchers. So there's two uh, problems with that. First, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. You can't do shit about education. You can't do shit about D60 or D70 schools. So what the, what the hell are you talking about, man? Why are you even talking about education? You have no power to do jack shit with education. But if he does get a hold of a hold of education, then he's going to get, take money away from the public school. So public education has been failing, and it's 65% of the people probably don't vote. There's lots of poverty, lots of crime. So I, I would blame the school system. The school systems are very powerful. They're teaching the, our child, the minds of our children. They're embedding, you know, thoughts into the minds of our children for future generations. So we see the effects of the D60 and D70 educational system. I would like to see the county commissioners raised from three to five. I mentioned this before. Um, Zach Swearingen. So I got a couple more things about his platform, but overall he's not qualified. Jenny Paulson, she won't admit that. White trash Jenny Paulson won't admit that Zach Swearingen just isn't qualified. He, what, owns a private shooting range? I mean, you know, good that he served our country, but what does that got to do with running the county commission, you know, the planning commission? He's a member of the planning commission, so he's only worked in government for a year, and then that's it. And now he's government for a year and it's planning and zoning so one department one powerful department but only a member so a piece of that department and it doesn't compare to run the entire thing the 25 percent of the poor of public county would not be represented by zach swearingen he will only represent the upper middle class or maybe the lower middle class who think they're upper middle class 
and up, and that's it. The rich and the middle class will be represented by Zach, but none of the poor and the working class is in limbo. They are going to be in purgatory. Will Zach Swearingen give a shit about working class, or won't he? My guess is he's against unions because he is for the corporations, so he doesn't care about the working class peoples. But I haven't heard him say anything about unions. Just he's a Republican, so I assume that. So he wants to lower crime. Great, right? Of course. But how? Uh, improve the relations to our higher education facilities. Obvious, right? These are obvious things. Uh, we want to decrease crime, create more high-paying and manufacturing jobs, improve relations with our higher education facilities. He's talking about the colleges, right, CSU and the community college. So, of course, you should improve relationships with everybody. You improve. Is he saying that they have a bad relationship with them? They should decrease crime, right? He single-handedly is going to get the crime decreased unless it's a cop committing the crime. Then he'll turn his head because, you know, all cops, uh, everything that cops do, they can do no wrong. They can do no wrong. So if they have a badge, of course, they could commit whatever crime, rape, murder, theft, or violent act that they want to commit. Uh, he wants to create more high-paying and manufacturing jobs. They're gone. Those jobs are gone. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. We're not going to get those. Uh, we can't compete with, you know, Chinese children working for pennies on the dollar. We can get smarter jobs. We can get technology jobs. We can get information age jobs. We could get, you know, postmodern jobs. But manufacturing jobs, that's the Industrial Revolution. He'll serve more warrants. He says he's going to work to maintain public county facilities, keep them up to date, right? More vague political bullshit. Just the facilities. What about the buildings, the land, the landscaping? What facilities? You talking about the pumps, the kitchen pumps, the grease traps? After gang t task force warrant serving, so let's serve more warrants, right? Let's just uh, let's just start warning everybody. Everybody gets a warrant. Warrant for you. Warrant for you. Gun for you. Gun for you. So help veterans walk. Help them unless they're homeless, right? Uh, address the opioid crisis and homelessness, since the, clearly they're combined and they're related. Uh, address them, like a P.O. box address, the street address, mailing address for opioids. Is that what he's talking about? The poppy fields are in Afghanistan, so uh, I want to see the big wigs go down. F quit doing this piddly shit. You know, if anything, they might just be getting high on heroin, so you have to take them to jail, so now they got some place to live. Uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But improving the wages for public county employees, so the staff, the fat cats are already on the public county dole who are already getting welfare from the taxpayers of public county. Yeah, I'm sure your, your jobs are tough. I'm sure you're earning all your wages. He says let's increase their wages. So he's trying to buy the love from the government workers of public county, and he's not mentioning improving wages for anybody else, just the people of public county. So that's actually kind of a liberal idea, right, Improve, in, increasing wages for government employees increase in taxes, right? And where is that money going to come from? So he's talking about improving wages. Well, labor is the, one of the biggest expenses out there. Here's something interesting. Zach Swearingen only promises to give Pueblo West infrastructure, but Pueblo uh, City gets specific haunted museums and outdoor hot tubs and indoor go-karts. So infrastructure. Uh, does that mean Pueblo West will get new roads, fiber optics, Wi-Fi, Include to me that Zach Swainson is going to represent the heart and soul of the common folks of rural Pueblo County. If anything, Chris Wiseman represents the heart and soul of the common folks of rural Pueblo County. He's talking about raising wages for the Pueblo County employees, so maybe some need to increase wages, but we all need to increase wages. And how bad are they being paid? $10 minimum wage right now. So uh, I feel like you should try to cut back on wages for the government employees if they can be cut back, like, you know, give a livable wage. But so that's, you know, a Republican interesting idea. Research, when he's not drinking or shooting or mudding or, you know, surfing. Hang 10, man. Hey, brah. Hey, brah. Let's just, uh, let's just go surfing, brah. Nah, don't you understand? Hang 10, brah. Let's go Cali. Let's go Cali and hang 10 and surf, brah. <laughs> so uh, he's going to research some gelling alternatives. So watch out. He's got some research coming for us. So if you guys are waiting for this report, the relationship with Pueblo County government has with all the communities and governing bodies within the Pueblo County. So he's going to help do things and do good things. And he's not going to do bad things, but he's going to do the good things. He's going to help the veterans, not hurt them. He's going to help the people, help the employees, help the infrastructure. When he talks about Pueblo West infrastructure, he just generally says he's going to give Pueblo West some infrastructure. But for Pueblo City, he said very specifically, haunted museums, hot tubs, go-karts, 
and infrastructure. So this makes it sound like Pueblo West is going to get the fiber optics, Wi-Fi, and the roads, and the schools, and the hospitals, and the gymnasiums, and the parks. None for Pueblo City, right? They got that one initiative, but it seems like Pueblo West is uh, Zachary's favorite. Zachary Swearingen loves Pueblo West, and they're going to get all the infrastructure. Pueblo City is only going to get a few haunted museums because it's like a big party city, but nobody would want to live there. This is Zach Swearingen's perception. So for Zachariah, there's many things that I agree with Zachary Swearingen on. I agree that those words, livable wage and job creation and affordable housing are good words and they have meaning. Those words actually mean something. Uh, most of it, I don't, I don't give a crap. He's going to say that he's got this jailhouse report. So I want to see this party at the jailhouse report before election day. He's going to do this research on the jail alternatives. Okay, let's see your report. You promised it. So is he going to do the report? Will he do it as you know, governor, or will he do it now? So he promised it, right? But I think the only promise he can upheld is the thousand years of darkness that will descend upon Pueblo County if Zach Swearingen is elected, because overall, he, you know, sucks. He's not a very good uh, Republican. He's increasing all these wages for the government workers. He's pro-corporate welfare. He's a planning and zoning land Nazi. He blames the heroin on the homeless people. He wants to get Fort Carson relocated down to here. He wants 